Hello everyone, so here we are back with a final look on this really cool USA Bell System Western Electric Mickey Mouse foam. Now, I believe the Mickey Mouse foam was part of the Bell Systems design line, and basically the design line was full of a whole host of different type novelty telephone, and um, I believe that Bell System owned the components inside these novelty telephones, and um, the casings or the shells, whatever you want to call it, were made by the American Telecommunications Corporation. That's what I believe anyway. Um, but anyway, this one's the Touch Tone Mickey. It's in very good condition for its age. I've just finished restoring it. Um, it wasn't too bad. The keypad needed a look at. Um, the contacts were quite dirty on the uh, on the back of the keypad and it was causing the um, sound in the receiver to be muffled when you press the button. It's supposed to do that but when you release the button it's supposed to bring the volume back up to the regular um, level but it didn't. Um, so that was due to dirty contacts, it was creating sort of a resistor. Uh, so that's all sorted now um, and I've just basically give the phone a good clean and a polish and reassembled it all and it's turned out very well, I think you'll agree. I've also added this long handset cord, um, the original one was a short handset cord but because I plan on using this phone I decided to add a long handset cord and it is a genuine Western Electric handset cord. Of course I couldn't put a generic uh, handset cord on a phone that's all original. So anyway, um, here's a look at the phone, so as you can see from the front here, just turn it around, there he is from the side. And the back. And the other side there. And as you can see it is in very good condition. There isn't any discoloration from what I can tell. Um, so that's very good. So I'll just give you a look at the handset. So we have a regular um, Western Electric type handset but this isn't made by Western Electric. It would say on there, Bell System property not for sale, or something like that. can't remember exactly what it says, but it says something along those lines. I'll just show you the receiver. So we kept the original receiver, which we have dated 78. The handset's also dated 78, whichever way around it is, there it is. Not sure how well you can see that in there, but anyway, it does say 78. So that's the receiver. Now I did upgrade the microphone, or the transmitter, to an electronic type because, as I said, I do plan on using this and they do give a much better transmit. Um, these are just what I sourced off uh, the internet, I believe. The place I got these from was antiquetelephones.co.uk or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but it's something along those lines. But they're very, very good. Of course, you can make your own if you wanted to, but I just go with the easier route. So we have a modular handset card there with the RJ10 ends. And, as I said, a very long handset card which is really handy. So I'll just zoom in on the keypad here so you can have a better look. So here's the touch tone keypad and as you can see it's an alphanumeric keypad and that's very typical for an American phone. Here we have the number card which I typed up myself on a typewriter. As you can see it's the type of number that the Bell system used to use in their adverts and that number's also been used in a lot of old films. It's area code 311-555-2368 and the buttons have a nice sound to them a very vintage sound and as you can see the, the plastic casing here that sits around the keypad is very shiny and hardly has any scratches on it at all so that was the keypad and there's just a general look at the Mickey figure itself um, as you can see, it's the old type of Mickey. We have the, the white face here. He has sort of a mink-coloured face now, 
more of a skin coloured. Um, but this is the vintage type Mickey. And uh, all the paint's in very good condition, which is very good. And all the little um, accents there. And um, of course the right arm there is the hook switch for the handset. So here's a look at the base of the phone, and if I bring it closer to the camera you can see what some of these stickers say. So I won't bother reading it out, because you can see that quite clearly. Turn that that way, you can see the other one. That's what I was talking about, about the, the shell of the phone being your property, and the um, components inside belong to the telephone company. And just there we have the date code, so that's made on the 324th day of 1978. So it's saying that we've got a 1 Ren value ringer. Some nice branding there, it says the Mickey Mouse phone. And finally here we have our ringer adjustment there. So it's on loud at the moment, but you can set it to soft as well. I'll show you that in just a moment. I'll set this back down here. We can see we have all our four feet intact, and I did clean those up because they were quite dirty. And uh, this, of course, being a modular phone, we have the the modular RJ11 line port, and I have a BT plug on the end there because, of course, I'm using this in the UK that's the line card and we have the modular RJ10 handset card on the opposite side here which I can't undo because there's a little um, grommet sort of thing here a clip keeping that secured in place so that's the base of the phone alright then so I think that's all there is I can talk about on this really nice touch tone Western Electric Mickey so I've got the phone plugged in now and without further ado I'll start with the demos but first I just thought I'd show you the tones as they're being dialed out, just so you can hear that everything's working properly. So I'll just press the numbers in sequence as they are on the keypad. So there you go, you can hear all the tones very clearly. Um, they were a bit crackly before, and also, as I said, the sound in the receiver was muffled after you'd finished pressing the buttons. But as you can hear, that's just at the normal volume. So that's all squared away. So, first of all, I'll start with an outgoing call demo, and then I'll show you the ringer. So, here goes. Here we have the dial tone. So there we go, I'll call one other number, I'll call my number, my landline number that is. Which is why I'm covering it. So there you go. If you can hear any banging outside, I apologise for that background noise. Um, one of my neighbours has got one of their gardeners round. <sighs> anyway, so it looks like no one was answering. No one must be home. <laughs> Wink. Anyway, um, there we go. So without further ado, I'll call it for you and you can hear the ringer. Um, so it's just a trim line ringer, so of course it sounds like a trim line phone, but I think these design line Western Electric phones all had um, trim line ringers. But it's a very nice ring anyway, so anyway, I'll shut up and ring it. So here you go. 
So that's loud. You can make it a bit softer. So it's a little bit of a difference. And back on loud. I'll let it go one more time. So there we go. You can just see how clean this is. I'm really pleased with this. As I said, I am planning on using this. I'll have this set up in my living room after I've finished making this video. Because it's a very nice classic phone. So there we are. So hopefully you enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like. Comment if you wish. And please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again in my next video, whatever that should be.